Good morning. How are we doing? It is Sunday, Remembrance Sunday today. So if you're coming in, give me a hello. Um, let me know you are in. If you're on replay, drop a replay below because I had a question, um, which I have a lot, which which I quite like, actually, because it, it makes me go back and reflect. And I think this is a good lesson for everyone to go back and reflect about where you started, how far you've come, what's what you've achieved over the years and you know, going back to all the, the amazing stuff that that we've done at Fruity Fit as well, but it was like um, a few of our, our team, our coaches as well, uh, have had this question as well. Like, why is it we that it's like women 40 plus? It's a great question. And when I go back, like, this is where I go on a bit, by the way. Ta- if you thought I tangent when I'm talking about carbs and... Good morning, Sue. How are we doing? If you thought I tangent when I talk about carbohydrates and fasting and blood sugar diets and uh, protein and whatnot, this is... This is probably going to be more of a tangent. So if I go back, and I, and I explain this now, I, think, I feel like if I do this now very thoroughly, I can just send this video if I ever get to the point. But I used to personal train. So when I was at um, uh, Loughborough University and Oxford, Brooks University doing postgrad research as well, I was personal training at the same time, which was exhausting, I must say, when I think back now. Um, just studying personal training, studying personal training. Um, great fun. But at the same time, I seem to just be training women basically 40 plus without really realising. There was a few guys, a few couples at the time, um, which is similar to what we do now. By the way, we don't just train women 40 plus. Um, We do have a range of programmes. We work one-to-one with people. We work with couples. We work with guys one-to-one as well. But our main programme, our kickstart programme that people know us for and people say, oh, yeah, I need to do your kickstart, that is for women 40 plus. Hey, Emma. So... When going back, I was personal training at the time, and most of uh, the people I worked with were women forty plus, and just just randomly, really. And it, I started to see that, you know, in between our sessions, so we'd have a session, they'd be feeling great, motivated, but in between that, it was like one, maybe I couldn't fit them in for another session, or two, maybe they couldn't afford two sessions a week or whatever, and it was a bit like. In between, I'd say, like, right, let's set a program in. Let's set your program up so you can do this. And, you know, some people would do it. But a lot of people would be like, I'd rather do something at home. Or I don't really feel that comfortable doing what we do together in the gym on my own. Because, you know, there's loads of guys in the corner. And let's face it, it's quite, it can be quite intimidating place. And, and I'm, and I, it's, I'm not, I don't think that's a problem necessarily in terms of, you know, groups of, kids if you like 20 year olds teens in there lifting weights having a bit of a joke at least they're doing something quite nice and positive you know getting in shape getting fit getting into their lifting which is a really positive thing and if i'm honest really helped me um in terms of that focus but you know it can be quite intimidating when they're when there's groups of people just you know messing around having like working out but you want to go in and use something and yeah it can be quite judgmental place as well and and I appreciate that not everyone's going to be supportive. And what they would often do is just go, you know, I'll just do on the cross trainer, the bike. And then it's like the motivation is low. It's boring. Good morning, Debbie. They find it quite boring as well. And I was, I was thinking there must be like something else we can do here. And what we ended up doing is almost doing stuff that people could actually do at home anyway. Because it was like, right, if we do minimal equipment, you can do your workout in this room in the gym. Morning, Beth. And not really go over there and use any kettlebells or dumbbells. You can just do it in this room. All you need is a mat. No one really comes in here anyway. Um, because there's just like a mat in there. It's like um, a smaller room. And this was across a few gyms already. Commercial gyms, big commercial gyms. Um, smaller gyms as well. Um, and it seemed to be the, the similar thing. And, and, it, and it, was, it was interesting. And it got, got, us think, got me thinking really at the time about we could make this a lot more simple because people who have got the best results just literally did more. That was it. It wasn't about how good the equipment was, whether we did use this piece of equipment or that piece. Of it. it was just that they showed up more. So they had something that they felt comfortable doing rather than being worried about looking silly. I'll be too big. I'll be too unfit. I don't want to be feeling uncomfortable in the corner of that gym. And then it, and then it, I guess the, the straw was really when we were in a gym, which I thought was quite friendly and, and I learned a lot if I'm honest in this, this space because I was like I thought I thought that the gym we were in was actually quite a nice you know it was a hotel as well quite a nice atmosphere 
and but it was really busy at times like people just walking in and out everywhere and she was like oh i feel really panicky like basically I'm starting to have a panic attack panic attack and we just go upstairs and get out there so let's, let's go upstairs we just had a chat in like nice little uh, cafe bit and it was like you know i'd rather if i'm trained in my home it was like okay so we we went did that for a bit they started bringing uh, a few friends in as well and then we started doing it and they actually got better results and it was like why is that well it's because they're being more consistent it's fitting their lifestyle more it was like these small things that they could do rather than an hour's personal training session which we did there then nothing for the rest of it and it was like this hour that was like they like kind of enjoyed it but kind of were like dreading getting there but it was like an hour of their time it was like then when they went to the gym they kind of felt like they had to do an hour as well which is you know, my mistake as well you learn right it was only like 18 uh, 19 at the time and we're told like yeah, yeah you've got if you go to the gym it's, it's an hour it's an hour's block and it's like for a lot of people especially now with work demands working from home fitting things in we then beat ourselves up and think it's pointless to do half an hour 10 minutes 20 minutes but guess what you do when you do this shorter amount of time you put more effort in right because like, i've got this pull-up bar and i always talk about this but if i've got to do that for an hour i'm on my phone in between i'm diddly doodly and i'll start reading i'll start reading my own book that I haven't read in years. <laughs> I'll do anything. Um, then do the thing. But when I know, right, I'm just going to do one set and I'm going to go make breakfast or I'm going to do one set and I'm going to go play with the kids. I'm do one set and I'm going to go to the bathroom, whatever. Too much information. Um, I then just put everything into that one set and I get it done. And over the course of the week, months, years, I've started to incorporate it as part of my lifestyle. This is something that we started seeing. I started seeing this quite visibly here. And... The, the one thing that got back then was that people started to, I started to see this and go, right, what happens if we put a program on in a church hall? So that's what we did. And this, this is the long way around, I know. Hey, Sue. Um, and only one person turned up actually to the first session. I was thinking, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's not going to work. And uh, they're in a mobility scooter as well. Um, Cassie, who you may have seen on our website, She's done a nice review for us now as well, who she wanted to walk her kids to school and now she's running 5Ks put shortly. And then obviously people start talking, oh, you know, what is it you do? What is it? What did you do to do that? What did you do to do that? Oh, you just used like resistance bands. You did 10 minute workouts, song challenges, all these things coming into. And, and then it became a thing of like, it just built up from there really. And then we're like, you know what? What was really key about this? The people. What's key, you know, in my work with diabetes as well, I found this. And you know, all the time you're learning, aren't you? So I worked in public health in the NHS and I ran programmes just for people with diabetes. Some with just with type 2, some with type 1 and type 2 altogether. And the thing that was amazing was community together. People going, oh, me too, actually. I struggled with that as well. I thought it was just me who just beats myself up for eating that or skipping that or not wanting to be here. It's like, oh, it's nice to know that you don't want to be here either, but we're both here doing this workout and we'll both feel great after. That's an amazing feeling. And and that's where it started to build up from then. And I started to see that that power of that community. Like, uh, we're gearing up for our, our Christmas meals, Chippenham, Devizes um, and Marlborough, not not in three days. So maybe that's that all in one week. I'm like, no, no, we can, um, we can space it out a bit. Although Christmas meals galore. More on that. If you haven't got my cravings guide and eating out guide, by the way, it's a free guide. Comment below with cravings, by the way. Um, and I'll send that over to you. Cravings. It's meal out guide, guide on meal out, meals out, how to feel more in control of that. Um, if you haven't seen that, put uh, cravings below and I'll send that over to you. But the thing is, the key part, speaking of meals out, is that community, that support, that like-mindedness, like people in the same boat. And we see it in our WhatsApp groups, that can go a bit galore sometimes, but we see it in sessions as well. People who are like, oh yeah, yeah, just try this instead. Oh yeah, I used to do that, and then I do that instead. And and that's the key part. That's the that's the part that I think is so important. And it's like that adaptation, like speaking from many of the natives who have kindly shared their stories as well, whether they've got knee issues, hip issues. Yeah, so it's not always going to be straightforward. And there, there is going to be things that maybe you can't do, but actually there's a lot of things you can do. And, and that's the key part. That's the key element. Because like a 10 minute workout that seems pointless, the things that you can do seem pointless because you can't do everything. But what do we do if we feel like, if we're always focused on the things we can't do? Well, we just, we might as well just throw in the towel then. We just think, oh, what's the point? And that's where that three legs of the stool then came up. 
the food habit, the fitness habit, the focus habit, because there's more to this. We know this from countless weight loss studies and fitness, health and fitness studies. What, what are the key things that people who lose weight and keep it off for a year or more? Um, what do they do? Well, they keep decisions really simple. They don't overcomplicate stuff. They fit it to their lifestyle. You know, they don't, they don't do these massive swings in on it or off it. Because actually it's what you do on average that counts. And what the key thing is, is we sometimes overestimate what we can achieve in a week and underestimate what we can achieve in a year. You know, I talked the other day about BMR, your basal metabolic rate, the calories that you burn just from staying there. So if you got up this morning, just didn't move, that's the calories you burn. Then you throw on top your structured exercise. I could be going for a, a lovely walk today or a, a workout, a fruity fit workout, an online workout any workout going out there that could be a workout like that then it, or it could be something like um then your neat as well which is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis i'll say that more slowly non -e non exercise activity thermogenesis and what this re this refers to is you know do you walk with your um talk with your hands waving around in the air do you fidget a lot do you stand up a lot things that you just do as part of your day that you don't really realize and this all builds up to your calories that you burn in a day. However, the thing that can swing quite a lot is obviously if you're working at a desk quite a lot, or you've changed jobs, stuff like that, you, you have a day where you're back to back on Zoom, for example, your knee goes down quite quickly. So considering that if you want to lose one pound in a week, you've got to be in a 500 calorie deficit to lose one pound of body fat, not just weight, body fat. You've got to be, that's 500 calories every day, by the way, that's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat, 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. And considering the fluctuations in our movement from day to day, considering the fluctuations in, oh, that's my colleague coming into the office. I've just bought you a gingerbread latte and a bacon roll. And it's all of a sudden we're like, oh, that's, remind me, I've just had that. And that, that could be 700 calories. Like, oh, I've just ordered a, um, a latte instead of an Americano, whatever. Oh, sod it, it'll be fine. You know, I've done it many times. Um, or someone's bought me X, Y, Z, these things start to add up. And what we can do then is then go, you know, I've got a bit over human psychology. I might as well just go well over. You know, I've spent a hundred pounds, might as well spend a thousand pounds. That's not how we work in anything else. Yet, we seem to do this with our calories. What would be different if we just went into this space and went, actually, there's more to this than just the food element, whether I've hit this or not. What would be different if I, instead of overspending my 200, I just went, you know, I'll just overspend by 200 and then overspend by 1,000. I'm just going to overspend by 200 and be okay with that today. What would be different then? What happens if maybe we actually need to set ourselves more to eat so we actually stick to it rather than sticking to something down here for like two days then just going, oh, sod it, I've just messed up. I've just messed up. I've just messed up. I've just messed up. I'll start again next week. That time in the middle is that part we want to get around. Long story short, that's why we went down to this food, fitness and focus, which... Huh. Uh, let me see if I've got it. Here we go. And then it was created from that. We've got those three, three legs of the stool, the food, the fitness, the focus, so that you can always focus on something. If someone's injured, guess what? You can focus on your food, you can focus on your focus, that self-care side of it, which helps us make better informed choices. Um, so yes, Matt, not just the exercise consistency, the snail wins the race, absolutely. And, it, and there's a lot to be said for being in it for the long haul in terms of your habit change. Because, you know, if you... It's amazing, considering what I said about BMR and like the differences, the fluctuate, how easy it is to overspend or under or you know under move if you like, and then how much you know three thousand five hundred calories in one pound of fat. You know, what are we actually losing if we're losing like five six pounds in a week? You know, it can be you know, so relative percentage wise as well to how much someone has to lose. But consider that if we're judging our results just on a weekly weigh in we could be far out on him and potentially missing out on some of the benefits you get from the fitness, like bone density, like our mood, like our muscle, which helps make everyday tasks easier, which helps us age better, which indirectly could help with fat loss in a year's time, in two years time, because we become to, we then feel more comfortable moving more. We do things more ourselves. Like some of the ladies say about, you know, how they're, they're on this, t on the table the other day, cleaning the windows and their husband walked in and goes what are you doing up there i've never seen you up there before they're like yeah i can get up and down from the floor now i'm a lot more mobile movements better all of these things that you know might seem nothing now but quickly soon do add up anyway so it really does come down to three things for this so 
Number one is that support and community. We know that when we bring like-minded people together, people tend to get better results. Number two, you know, we know that from support as well in terms of research. When you look at the diet that people do, like are they doing fasting, low carb, calorie counting, sins, whatever, points, the key thing is that support and accountability. Number two is it allows us to really look at the nutrition in a bespoke way. Like all the Q and A's that we do, for example, are quite bespoke for the questions that we get from similar like-minded people. So if one person asks something, I know it's going to be ultra relevant to someone else. And people often say to me, blimey, Matt, you did a video today. And it just like literally was on my mind that day. And I'm like, there's, there's, I'm not psychic in this. It's just if four people have asked me in the last week, there's a chance to ask someone else says as well. I could just say I'm psychic though, next time. Um, and this includes the fitness as well, which is the final part is how we can adapt it for you. We know when to push and when to come back a bit on there. And of course, there's a fine balance in there. So that, in a nutshell, is the answer. That was quite, how big did nutshells go? I don't know. Anyway, I hope that helps. I hope that answers your question. And um, that is that really. And our next um, chance to join us is on the 28th of November, where we're doing our pre-Christmas habit challenge. 21 day pre-Christmas habit challenge. If you're already in, by the way, uh, you will get access to this. More information on this will be coming inside our, our private group uh, shortly, and we'll explain this to you as well. Small habits, simple habits that you can do even around this Christmas time, because let's face it, most people put on 10 to 13 pounds around this time. It will be different if we just set our expectations a little bit differently. So have an awesome day, whatever you're doing today, and I will see you soon. Take care.